The 6.5 is on the road at Pure Accelerate 2024 here in Las Vegas, my second home. I love it here. Daniel, how you doing, my friend? It's great to be here. Pure Accelerate 2024, Pat. It's a big moment in inflection. We're seeing all of the infrastructure uh, discussion starting to come to yeah. life as companies are trying to find the value in their enterprise investments. I mean, look, a lot of CapEx, but now it's consumption. Where is this AI being consumed? And of course, right. data platforms, storage, cyber resiliency. These are big topics and yeah. big topics here at Pure Accelerate. Yeah, I mean, industry inflections we've seen where it's, hey, infrastructure is cool. Uh, and then, oh, it's software. That's cool. But the great thing about AI is infrastructure is back in focus again. And by the way, companies that have infrastructure platforms leveraging hardware and software seem to be differentiating themselves and whether it's in the GPU space or even in the storage space. And to continue this discussion, Prakash and Sean, welcome to the 6.5. Thanks so much. I'm 6.5. Congratulations to both of you. You had some big announcements here and your teams are making it happen thank you good to be here yeah you got it yeah, it's good to have you both here you heard our preamble i mean look we're kind of finding that inflection this year you know last year all this enthusiasm and excitement you know llms gen ai but the truth is for the enterprises it's really about finding value it's about being more efficient yeah. more productive getting access to your data and of course for the vendors it's about making this really digestible and consumable and available and that seems to be what you all did here so, Sean, I'm going to start off with you and talking about Pure Fusion. This is a big moment. Yeah. Um, this is one of the items I think can solve a lot of the challenges for companies trying to get more out of their data. Talk a little bit about Pure Fusion, the announcement, sure. and why it's uh, going to solve some big problems. Great. But when we first introduced Pure Fusion, we were so excited about creating this unified global pool of storage. But we realized after about a year in market that we had several things that kind of held it back. Number one was customers wanted it to work for all of their existing data. Right. It wasn't enough just for new pools of storage or new things being deployed. Customers asked, what about everything I have right now? And so the big announcement we made today is that pure storage with a simple software update will work backwards compatible with everything that you have. So really it's an announcement about being prime time. Right. That it's available as a simple non disruptive update for all of your environments. And now you can create a single control plane for all of your appliances. Yeah, we had a great conversation with Charlie. He really hammered on the accessibility part, right? Accessibility to all, of course, accessibility for AI and, and folks like that. So another huge trend here, and it's funny, we always think that cybersecurity is something new, okay? But it's not. I mean, you look back 40 years, but as we've disaggregated infrastructure, we've disaggregated uh, even applications, the threat matrix uh, goes up. Um, and Prakash, um, what are you hearing from your customers related to cyber uh, resiliency? I mean, gone are the days of perimeter. Hey, we're gonna we're just gonna keep them out. Nobody's gonna get in. Therefore, we don't even have to have a plan to get them out and protect our data. Someone reading your email right now? I, I, exactly. Hopefully, it's somebody can respond to it intelligently. No, but seriously, what are your customers telling you about cyber resiliency? Well, it's changed a lot in the last twelve months. I think you know. It, we're on the early days where people are still understanding that perimeter security isn't <laughs> enough. Uh, there's, I don't know, it's a fragmented market with security tools and everyone's like, how do you protect the network? How do you isolate the database? How do you do right. security and roles over here? But, you know, at some point, you need to make sure every layer is protected and storage needs to be self-protecting. And right. it typically started with data. You know, what do you do to say, okay, what are my policies for data? How many copies do I have? What happens if someone gets it, et cetera? But the threat matrix has gotten way more difficult. Right. And, you know, now you have to connect the network and the hosts to the storage and look at and do a stride review, right, um, in kind of a security term, across that entire vertical application stack. Right. Um, so I think we've announced a bunch of things here from secure application workspaces to help secure AI container all the way down, all the way through cyber resiliency capabilities to look at oper operational configuration, advancements in detection, and just in case something happens, a way to get back up and running with SLAs. Well, it makes a lot of sense because literally you do have, the data is sitting on your devices and in your services, and why not offer cyber resiliency uh, at the point of data, 
That's basically. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a really substantial opportunity. And I think what you were alluding to, Prakash, is that with the advent of this AI movement, right, the vulnerabilities are exponential. It's not a little bit more. It's substantial in every different area. And, of course, these technologies also enable the black hats and the bad actors to be more sophisticated. You know, every great invention we have tends to get skewed into being used in two ways. And unfortunately, you know, for uh, the market, that means they're going to need to invest more. But that's a good thing in terms of companies stepping up and solving. And it sounds like here at Pure Accelerate, that's what you're doing. You've made some announcements around cyber resiliency. Talk a little bit about what you announced in particular for the Pure customer base and how they can benefit from what you're doing in cyber resiliency. Yeah, so the first thing is we do a security assessment. That assesses how well you're operationally protected. Is your front door open? Have you right. rotated passwords? Now, is that is a service? Just, is that a, a, a service or is it a piece a, of software a, that it's helps? A piece you of capability it. in Pure One. Okay. Where, you know, a customer can see this. Okay, we so we're not talking about like a professional services group has to come in and. Okay. Nope. You can now see when you're actually doing poorly. And Sean, I uh, introduced this idea of a co pilot. Yeah. That. Actually, you can ask, what do I have to do to fix my access problems or how do I benchmark against other people? But we also then servicized it to say, okay, you know what? You could continually do this and you could continually you know, keep opening front doors as someone provisions something. Since we're running a service and operating the storage on your behalf, right. why don't we have a resilience SLA? where anything we detect proactively right. will change the configuration, rotate your passwords, and keep you current and secure, and give your CISO a document telling uh, telling them all the things we've found to continually improve your posture. Yes. So we've architected in a way where a customer could take responsibility or they can trust the vendor to take responsibility for remediating these things. On top of that... We've announced that we can take a look at new attack patterns because, as you mentioned, AI in the hands of the bad guys is kind of scary. Now, data exfiltration and denial of service are way bigger attack patterns than I've encrypted everything in the data reductions changed, right? People have moved be beyond I've just encrypted everything. Now they'll change one block header and be like, well, you still can't access it anyway, right? So a lot of the attack patterns have changed and by looking at latency dynamics in the context of management commands, yes. we can tell what is signal versus noise and identify data exfiltration or denial of service types attacks. And then lastly, in case something happens, we're there for you. We'll ship a clean room array with all the PS required to get you back up and running. Now, it sounds very hol holistic, and it's funny. Years ago, I think I was asking uh, Charlie and company about, hey, you know, it makes sense. The data is there. You have some level of compute that can help you do this. Uh, what are you doing there? He said, stay tuned. And here we are. Now, it's great. You brought up Copilot. And, Sean, you announced a Copilot. And, I mean, Copilots are everywhere. And whether it's um, horizontal uh, across uh, a data set, uh, we're seeing vertical Copilots across finance, um, CRM, heck, even ERP and SCM, why do we need a co-pilot for data storage? Well, <clears throat> I think it's an exciting time for us to be in. Yeah. The ability to look across all the billions of data points in a storage platform and to be able to derive new insights really comes down to the kind of questions that you can ask. Right. We think that AI co-pilot is a radically new way of managing storage that we've ever seen before. Okay, so you can actually change things through Copilot as opposed to maybe querying and it telling you about the environment? Right. We, we have this unified um, operating system for a long time called Purity. Yeah. Now we have Fusion, which is a unified control plane. Right. And we create hundreds of petabytes of clean metadata. And AI fundamentally is an AI challenge. The ability to see across your entire fleet. I had a, a brother-in-law who works in the storage space. He's been administering storage boxes for a long time. And he came to me and asked, how do I stay up to date with everything that's happening? Right. This industry is changing so fast. Right. How do I keep up? Well, AI is this interesting way that we're allowing people to see what's happening across all your peers. Like Prakash just mentioned, now with this AI copilot, you can benchmark yourself against all of your peers. You can say, how am I doing against all my peers who are like me? Against a thousand that's other companies unique. in my cohort, what am I doing well? What am I not doing well? Right. And your, your status right now, which might be up to date, 
in six months may be way out of line. Right. So we can look across that entire thing end to end and give you recommendations on how you can level up your game and improve 10% against your peers. Oh, Funny, well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, our, our great audience in the 6.5 could, you know, they could hit a co-pilot or perplexity and say, you know, that, that great conversation with Sean and Prakash and yeah. Pat and then give us the summary. We don't have 20 minutes to watch it. You know, actually, Pat and I may have double checked our, our you know, what Charlie talked about <laughs> by doing. But I'm saying we watch it. It goes on for an hour. But this is the way we keep up with the world. When information gets created fast, you got to build solutions that enable customers to access and use all the technology you're building more, more really. Well, and I love the addition. And I, you know, as analysts, we, we like to pretend like we, we learn it the first time we get the, the briefing. But uh, comparing against your peers, it adds a ton of yeah. value, right? And obviously, it's private. You don't know who others are, but it's almost a an internal benchmarking. And it could have been just a, you know, a dashboard of something with, with a bunch of charts and heck, you could probably make your co-pilot do that the next version, but it's another thing to be able to ask it what to do, where do I rank on this, and to be able to query your system. And I have to, I have to think, too, it's an efficiency play for a data storage manager, too, or am I being a virtual product manager here? I think so. I think that's available for every role. Like this, this kind of skin will apply to every industry in the end. Okay. But at the end, it comes down to data. I think what you're going to see in the end is that this will take a decent storage admin and make them good, and it will take a good storage admin and make them amazing. Right. It's exactly cool. the way we see AI being implemented. It doesn't replace quality. It, it, it enhances. It all super it powers. Better. It up levels. All right, we got a couple of minutes left. Prakash, just want to hit you up on, you know, some of the SLAs you announced here at Accelerate this week. Can you talk a little bit more about those? Well, so the first thing is with Evergreen One, we found a new workload the AI one that didn't fit AI. the paradigm that we've seen in the past. You know, traditionally with VMware and SQL Server and, you know, traditional workloads, even unstructured workloads, more data equals more performance. You know, you like need data, you need bandwidth and latency for those applications, but they're well-defined, you know, application uh, types. Yep. Um, AI is kind of weird where I think right now everyone's like, I need to do something. I don't know what I want to do yet. I'll figure it out, and, you know, when you get down to training in infrastructure, everyone's like, I can create a reference architecture, Yeah. right? And we're just like, come on, there's got to be a better way. So when we started taking a look at, well, GPUs are an expensive asset, and training, you know, when I've even run our own uh, testing in metabolic health, I was actually doing something we can talk about later, um, to learn about LLMs. I realized, hey, I can do the training on one terabyte of data. It's just generating millions of parameters that are relevant on a small data set, right? And, you know, unless you're like a meta or an Amazon, like most of the data sets are sub 50 terabytes in training. Right. And co compute intensive. But when you get to applying the model to inference, it's a large data set, lower throughput thing. So we're like, okay, um, if that's similar to your provision to pipe to your ho home, like with a water bill, like, you get a one-inch, two-inch, three-inch, four-inch pipe. It guarantees the throughput of the water you're home. Right. And you pay for marginal usage and data. So we had to reorient away from data to solve this AI problem. We said it's a provisioned performance for GPU is what your reserved commit is. And you pay a marginal data rate like your water bill for right. using water. And that concept applies in a way where you don't know what your requirements are. You don't know what your apps are. The landscape is changing very drastically. How do you have no sunk cost and flexibility to grow as you need? So the consumption model works well, and our SLA is now guaranteeing the throughput you need to keep your GPUs busy. Gosh, imagine paying for only what you need, and your AI needs vary. I think even Charlie uh, mentioned, I think, five different use cases that, or different use cases that require different types of performance, different types of latency, and no, I love that. It's good. Well, listen, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much. I know there's a lot going on here at this week's Pure Accelerate. I'm sure you're going to be going from meeting to meeting to meeting if it's been anything like it has for us. Congratulations on the launch, all the uh, enhancements and fusion. Thanks so much. Next, uh, next big moment. Can't wait to see how that translates yeah. in the numbers and, of course, the cyber resiliency 
uh, updates. Uh, both Pat and I tend to believe this is a very big moment yeah. for security. And while AI is going to always kind of have the lead, security, wherever it goes, is going to have to follow. Let's have you both on soon. Thanks so much for joining us here on the 6.5. Thanks right, so much. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you. All right, everybody, stay with us. We are here at Pure Accelerate. Join us for all the coverage we have. Check out the links. We've had a bunch of different episodes recently with the team at Pure. And, of course, join us for all the episodes here on the 6.5. We're on the road. It's Pure Accelerate 2024. We'll see you all later.